Krista, thank you very much for this opportunity. We would like to tell us and Latin America about the HIV cure trial you led in Africa. So some things about this trial that were unique. Firstly, it was done on the continent of Africa, and this is where the majority of the global burden is. So it's important for that reason. Additionally, it was important we enrolled only women, and women are half of the burden, or even 53%, but they're very underrepresented in global research for HIV cure, even less than 20%. So it's important that we include women in the research as well. And how many women did you enroll? It's a small trial. We only enrolled 20 women, and these are very unique women. They were identified very early in the infection. In fact, less than two weeks from exposure, they were detected, and then they started treatment within one day. And what the significance of that is, is the reservoir. So HIV doesn't live in our blood. It, once it comes in, it settles in our reservoirs, which is in our lymph nodes, in our liver. Um, it can settle in the brain, so it's not really in the blood. And those reservoirs, that's where it's hiding, and that's why we can't eliminate it with antiretroviral treatment. So we really need a cure. So these 20 women, because they started treatment so early, the reservoirs are small. So we thought, these Perfect. women, we can cure them. <laughs> But there's a lot we didn't know. This was, again, a very early trial for Africa. The first one like it that had a analytical treatment interruption. What an analytical treatment interruption, or we short call it ATI, is that we ask people to quit their treatment, their HIV medications, to see if the intervention enabled the body to hold the HIV down. So these women, we thought they're going to have a very small reservoir. It can work very well with them. But we didn't know a lot at this time, so we started it. Only 20 women joined. And the 20 women, we were so hopeful they do well. Um, unfortunately, only 20% of the women became what we call post-treatment controllers. So the other 80% of the women had to restart their medication because their virus rebounded once they went on the ATI and had stopped their ARVs. Those who were post-treatment controllers, had any specific characteristic, molecular characteristic that led him? So it's a great question and I wish I had the answer already <laughs> for you. We've looked at just a few things. So the combination treatment they received for the trial, it was one, it's called a TLR7 agonist. And this is a product called Desitolamod that was made by Gilead Sciences. Then we give two broadly neutralizing antibodies. One is called VRCO7, and the other one is called CAP256. Those BNAVs, or broadly neutralizing antibodies, are given through an IV. And so the women receive those through the IV, and then they take the pill, the vesitolamod. They take 10 That's pills mm. every two weeks. So um, uh, the outcome when they stopped their treatment, um, about a third of them rebounded the virus very soon, just as if they had received nothing. And then, um, when they rebound, they restart their treatment. So they're finished. The next group was a delayed response. So they kept the virus down or it came up and down and up and down, and then they had to restart treatment. But we were encouraged because there was an impact from giving the intervention. The exciting group was the last third who were the post-treatment controllers, and they stayed off of treatment all the way till the end of the trial. Some of them restarted, but four of them 20% of who joined the trial were undetectable at the end of the trial. So they were rolled over into another study to just follow them up. And this was very exciting. So those after the trial were off treatment for a median of one and a half years. <laughs> so they didn't have to restart. Actually, um, one of them met restart criteria after just over one and a half years. Um, two more, one of whom made it to almost three years, she didn't rebound. She was undetectable, but she wanted to have a baby with her partner, so she restarted treatment. Right. The other one got employment, which is so important in our setting, and she wanted to go back on treatment for that reason. We don't know how long they would have gone. Maybe they could have been permanent controllers, but we can't say. We don't know what would have happened. The final one of the four is still off treatment. She's just over one and a half years now. She's completely undetectable. She was here at the trial and spoke 
in a panel. Yes, um, and we're really excited. You know, it's up to them if they stay off treatment. For some people, there's some anxiety with it. So it's exciting. It's extremely exciting. It's encouraging that we got a signal. Um, it's disappointing that this regimen wasn't effective enough for Gilead to take it forward and keep developing it. So they won't develop it with only 20% effect, but at least it gave us a lot to study and as far as the science. So we have to determine what's different about those right. four, but especially those three that made them control. Right. So the jury's out. We are still in the laboratory trying to look at it. Um, there are genetics or um, MHC types that are um, associated with control and there's some that are associated with progression of disease. We did find that there were both MHC1 and 2 um, protective alleles with those who were controlling. We can't say that, oh, that's the answer, but it's one association like we saw. Right. The other thing is interesting, we had to enroll people who were um, susceptible, their virus is susceptible to just BNAP. one BNAP, and some that were susceptible to two. We found that it didn't matter okay. if you were susceptible really to one or done. two. Mm -hmm. Um, three of the four controllers were susceptible to both, and so maybe there's two fighting at it, and then one of them was susceptible to only one. So we don't have the answer yet, and so we're still working in the lab, and it's going to be many months before we've really gotten all we can learn out of this trial, but there's much, much more to learn. Yeah, really, really uh, wonderful work, and I wanted to ask you, why are you working in HIV cure? I guess I can say it's just, it's fascinating for one thing, but there's a tremendous amount of need globally. Um, patients will say, I have to have this tablet every day and it reminds me of my disease and there's so much stigma. And that affects your relationships with your family, with your partner, your hopes and dreams. And it's discouraging to think of living with this lifelong infection. So when people go on ATI, you feel it when they say, um, uh, I can forget about HIV. For a few days, I don't even remember I have it. And imagine if they're permanently eradicated and then they don't need to think about this anymore and they're the same as everybody else and they're, it's so positive for them.